Right, good afternoon and very excited to have with us Nick Olson from Predict Win down from uh, New Zealand and he's our sponsor so everybody give him a big hand of applause he sees the value in the Panama Posse and he's the man with a master plan when it comes to actually going over weather forecasts and he's going to go over specific weather uh, weather locations around this route and he's going to tell us what new things Predict Win is cooking up right now hey hey Nick you know, how are you? Uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, we're super excited to um, be part of the, the Panama Posse. Um, it's an awesome, awesome event rally. And um, yeah, it's really awesome to be here. So yeah, I'm, as uh, as Deepma said, I'm Nick Olson from Predict Wind. And um, yeah, I'm here to hopefully uh, give you a little bit of, a little bit of insight into what we do. So I'll, um, I'll click, I'll, I'll, I'll kick off with a a screen share just to explain a, a little bit about us. Great. So um, actually I'll flick over to the other slide. So yeah, we have we have our own models. Um, we have our own weather models. We run them uh, twice a day. And what's probably important to some of the stuff that, that you'll be doing in, in the Panama Posse is that we have this high resolution modeling here. And so that means that we've got super detailed forecasts for certain areas uh, especially in the coastal areas where you'll be uh, doing a lot of your um, a lot of your passages we um we also have the ecmwf which is the number one global weather model uh, we have the ukmo which is the number two global weather model and we have spire which we've just added in and uh, that's super a super interesting weather model because they are uh, collecting, they've got the SPY has the largest nano satellite network in the world, and they are gathering, uh, they, they're gathering more data to feed into their model in a, in a more relevant time span than any other weather model. So, you know, we heard over, over, over the lockdown when, when planes uh, stopped flying so much that they, um, you know, the forecast accuracy went down. Well, SPIRE, um, the ECMWF and UKMO recognised that and they started getting uh, data from Spire, but Spire actually have a, a much bigger data set that they use themselves from their uh, nano satellite network that covers the entire globe. Um, and so that model is one to look out for and, and, and keep an eye on. Uh, we did a validation study and it's, it's, doing, it's doing slightly better than the ECMWF. So a private model, a private, private company are uh, doing a great job. So and then we have the GFS, the predict wind models, and not that it's relevant to you, the Rome, but the NAM and the HRR if you're further up the um, in, into the into the US there. Anyway, uh, so what? How do you see all this stuff? We have two ways of seeing it. We have the predict wind app and website, so you can just have that on your phone if you're in um, cell coverage. You can use that. It's got a uh, heap of information, there's tables, there's graphs, there's wind maps, there's cape maps, there's gust maps, there's everything. You can do weather routing in there, there's observations, so you can compare the observations to um, to, to the forecasts uh, and get a, get a bit more clarity. Um, but if you're going, when you go out of uh, cell phone, mobile data coverage, um, ideally you'd use the offshore app. If you're doing bigger passages, you would want to have some satellite comms or an SSB connection, and you can use the offshore app. Uh, the, the offshore app is awesome. You can do your weather routing on it. You can get GRIBS, uh, download GRIBS. It has GMDSS forecasts in it, which give you uh, a heads up of any nasties that are coming. It's, that, that's a, a written forecast from a, a biometeorologist uh, for the local area. So there's a huge amount of good information in there. Um, probably not the time to talk about all of the, the details of both of these uh, today. Um, but if you want to know more, we have a ton of information, a ton of tutorials um, and on the Predict Win website and our support team will answer any questions that you have uh, when it comes to either of these apps or anything that we, we do and offer. So I'll stop sharing that screen there. That is great. Thank you so much. That's a really good, uh, that's a really good setup because, you know, our we have so many areas now with different weather models that I'm so excited about predict, predict Wind's ability to really just zoom in on that. 
yeah, I'll, um, I'll show you something that was, because um, I'll just flick on my screen sharing there. So yeah, you, people, um, people go, oh, well, you've got all these weather models. I don't know what to do with it all. And um, we have a couple of ways if you don't, if you do feel overwhelmed by the data. I mean, well, the reason we have all these models is so that we can look for trends and, and get a higher confidence in the forecast. And you'll see here, I've got um, some tables here for, you know, and tables are great for, a, you know, a, the information at that spot, but it is just for that spot. And you can be quite specific with your spots and have um, really, really uh, good information for those spots. You can see here, it's, I mean, I look at this and I, I love seeing all the models because I like looking at all the trends, uh, but you can collapse these tables up and it's actually going to Put all those weather models together and it's 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 it, it is an algorithm it's not just an average um it does get rid of outliers and so it can be uh, give you a pretty good um simplification of what we're looking at there so obviously we can go through the week and look at the tables and that sort of thing and another another way of looking at that is something that we call the daily briefing and that for that spot it is it'll give you the morning afternoon um and it's that's a, a very clever algorithm that, um, that 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 was put together by us, and um, just gives you a bit of a simplified, you know, a simplified view of, of of what we have because it can be overwhelming if you're unsure how to deal with all the all the weather models. Um, also gives you the tides, which can be pretty handy. Uh, so anyhow, we wanted to look at wind maps. Where do we want to start? Let's start in on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Why don't we go? Why don't we go up there to? Okay, so we've got Turtle Bay there, and I'll just change. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. We'll put one of the predict wind models in there, and yeah. we'll just zoom in a bit. And uh, and you can see, yeah, we're at an eight K resolution model there, so we can get a lot, a lot higher um, forecast, a lot more detail. Okay. If you're looking at the short term, you really want to look at the high resolution models. So the higher the resolution, uh, especially in the, the next day, you know, today and tomorrow, high resolution is basically can't be beaten. So for, 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 for giving you an idea of, uh, of what's going on. So, and, as, and it will take into account, you know, thermal, uh, you know, whether you're going to get a sea breeze or uh, land effects, you know, whether there's, there's um, high areas of land. Um, yeah. yeah, it's 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 pretty cool how all, all right. that works. Well, having said that, let's look forward to um, the area, which is another cape, which is just down the, the coast on, along this route. And that would be the entrance to Cabo San Lucas. And there's Cabo Falso down there. So if you just zoom out a little bit and go maybe along that coast to the very tip there, and you see where it makes the little dog leg, where the wind kind of wraps around that cape, that's Cabo Falso. That's another very interesting point for folks that are either heading down to Cabo, or, or sometimes when they're wrapping around to go back, uh, back up north, they have to make it around that point. Yeah, right. That's pretty, um, yeah, I can see how <laughs> you get a bit going on there. Yep. So yeah, I mean, we can look at any any parameters for any of these spots, we can flick through and we can look at the gust map and probably something that we should explain to people is that when you're looking at a wind map, um, you are looking at an average wind speed. And so that average wind speed can often be a lot lower. Um, and something we wanna look at is we wanna look at the difference between, I'll zoom out so we can explain this a bit better, is we wanna look at the difference between the gusts so let's come up here where it's windy. Yep. Look at the difference between the gusts and the average wind speed. If there's a big difference, then it's really unstable, and there could be other other things going on there. But if the um, if the average and the and the gusts are, are not too far apart, then the, the the weather's a lot more stable. And so instability. What I mean by that is we might have um, you know rain and cape together. And, and then these gusts and averages are, are a long way apart, then we want to, we'd want to be quite cautious. We could end up with um, a lot more uh, extreme weather than what uh, the, if we just looked at the averages and the wind maps there. 
Yeah, perfect. And can we see sea states too then? Particularly around the way around the Cape, sometimes the, the combination of wave, uh, swell, and then of course tide can sometimes create washing machines. And that's that's obviously something we also want to avoid. Yeah, okay. So when we're looking at wave maps, I'll just toggle off the split screen. It's you can't go past the ECMWF wave map. It is the, yeah. the, the ECMWF wave is, the is better thing. than better than anyone and it's um we we can actually change this resolution here to 14 kilometer and we just get a bit more detail on um in in, in the waves and we can click anywhere on the map there and we can see the wave height its direction and uh the period so yep perfect all right let's go down to our next trouble spot which is always cabo corrientes um that's a, that's for those of you who are coming out of Puerto Vallarta and making your way down to Barra here this week. If you made it around Cabo Corrientes, you know what I'm talking about. And for those of you who are heading north afterwards, it's something you look, look out for. Cabo Corrientes uh, can, uh, between the current and the weather flow, can sometimes really be a nasty piece of water. So we always take it very cautiously there. So what do you got for us there right now? Yeah, so what we're on here is we're actually on a Cape map, um, which is um, the, the instability in the air. And you can see where, uh, as we come down the coast here, whoops, I didn't mean to zoom in there. Um, and I've got two weather models. We've got the ECMWF and they've got the GFS so that we can sort of see a bit of the difference. And um, why do we want to know about Cape? Um, as you can probably tell me, but uh, instability, um, you know, thunderstorms. If, you, if, if we've got these... Let's have a little just to scroll down the coast here. You see here we've got we've got some higher Cape levels there. If we're sailing through here and we've got these high Cape levels, we would want to be on on alert basically. If um, we might even if it's if the forecast it could you could have a 10 knot uh, forecast and then you could have a thunderstorm roll through and you'll get 35, 40 knots. So want to keep an eye on the Cape. It's not a it's um, it's not a, a definite, this is what's going to happen, but it's definitely a warning. Uh, the other thing we'd want to look at when we look at Cape is just have a, a, a quick browse at our, our rain maps, because especially if there's uh, rain and Cape in the same place, we know that there's, um, you know, there's something, something pretty nasty coming. Um, you just mentioned um, currents. So we do have ocean data in the weather routing. So we'll look at that in a little bit, but we do have um, all the currents. So they're currents, not tides. So yep. there's a difference between uh, between the two, but the ocean currents will give you uh, a fair idea of, of, of what's going on. So. Thank you. Cool, cool. Well, the next, the next trouble spot is always the Tehantepec area. So let's see uh, how that forecast looks right now. Tehantepec is the area from between Huatulco and Chiapas. And the marina there is Marina Chawe. And you typically sit there and wait for a window for you to go through the area. It is yeah, under... I'll just look over to the wind map for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why we're looking at it, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, and there's your little Tehantepec blowing. Yeah. So we'll go into the the predict wind. On this right hand side, I've got the predict wind PWG 8K, and on the yep. left, we've got the ECMWF, and both running at pretty high resolution there. And uh, yeah, definitely something to to look for. I have seen this before, where um, it's not in it's not in, um, you know, you can even see a bit of a difference there between the ECMWF and the PWG model, uh, where the, the high, res, you know, the high resolution models are better. If we, let's have a look at the, um, the GFS, and you can see that there's quite a different, quite a different picture there. So, um, yeah, this is, this is usually when you'd get someone say, oh, but you, the forecast was wrong. It said it was, you know, they might have looked over here and said, oh, it's, you know, it was only going to be 10 knots and uh you know whereas we've got 24 and we're just looking at a wind map so let's flick over to the gust map yep and um oh, actually sorry we need to go to the ecmwf 
over here and look at the gas map and let's have a look at the UKMO. And uh, yeah, we're still, you know, we're def definitely getting a different picture. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's, you did, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to go sailing in there. It's 50 knots. Yep. <laughs> well, so for the purposes of identifying when it's safe to go, how do we see uh, um, basically a projection for the next seven days for the area? Yeah, so this, this um, what we've, well, let's zoom out a bit. Yep. And um, so we can we can we can go through the whole week here. Okay. And you can so we've got our um, time down the bottom right here, and it's like it's local time, even though I'm in New Zealand, it's it. local time for the location. What's happening? Okay. And um, so we can actually go through. The and week. those are those are hours, correct? Hours from right now. Uh, it's the date. Oh, it's so the date. So okay. that's. Yeah, the date from from uh, from now. So the yeah, forecast yeah. when you open this, it'll start at now, and okay. then um, and then we go through. And you can see there, we, there is there is a window, right? So this is obviously uh, a good a good time to, uh, you know, yeah. talk about <laughs> sailing when it's the right time to go or or motoring. Um, you know, there's we're, we're out there to have a nice time, not a horrible time. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's definitely, you definitely want to be picking your window here, right? Yeah, it's a very short window, actually, for the 70 or 80 miles that are the epicenter of this. So a lot of times folks will actually wait for a two or three day window before venturing across. And the harbor yeah. master there is quite cautious with that because, uh, you know, things don't necessarily, even though if they're predicted, they may not happen at the exact hour. So you get out there and you still have a lot of washing machine left from the blow before. So you really wanted to lay down for about 12 to maybe 16 hours before you're going to make it up there. Yeah, and and definitely have a look through um, through all the models and, um, you know, and, and, and see, you know, make sure that yeah, there isn't, if there is one that's um, saying that it's going to blow up, have a really good look at why it thinks that um you know and yeah we'll get into i mean i if it was me i would be running weather routing across here as well because then i can compare all the models at once uh for where i'm going to be so i can actually see where i would be at each particular time based on how fast my boat goes and i can i can see the gusts and the and and the wind maps and everything else that i want to see all in that one place and it's not just me guessing where i might be it's actually uh, a, a really good approximation. So yeah, we'll have a look at the weather routing soon. Where do we want to look at next? Next, we're going to go down the coast. So we're just going to scroll down and we're going to go to the Papagayo area. So there yeah, it is. Set up for that. Those are lovely, lovely winds. They're usually predicted pretty fairly, fairly. Um, uh, that doesn't look right. There we go. Papagayo. If you zoom in on Costa Rica, halfway between Costa Rica and Nicaragua, there's a little shoehorn that comes out where that lake is. Next. Where, uh, yeah, uh, just yeah. zoom in there. Yeah, right there. I, I'm in the wrong spot, right? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So these are winds that come over that lake. The lake basically acts as a, I don't know, an, an, a, a wind amplifier. And if you move the cursor to the coast itself, right, right, yeah, right around there, that's where the epicenter of the Papagayo winds is typically between middle of December through around March 15th. And what we again do there, we keep one foot on the beach because it's not so much the winds, but it's the wind gusts that almost double in wind speed. They right. are, and, and they tend to operate 70% of the time. So even the wind forecast, you know, may tell you 10, 15, maybe 18 knots. It's usually 36 to 40. And yeah. that's what you feel. <laughs> There's a fair bit of acceleration there. Uh, uh, let's have a, just a quick look at something and see if it shows up in there. Yeah, it looks like there's a bit of a difference between the temperature and here. Yeah. You know, to, in this lake, it's 28 degrees and out here, 26. 
So yeah, yeah. A bit of a difference probably helping with the acceleration of that of that yeah. win there. So uh, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, as you say, that instability there, you can definitely have a look at the um, at the uh, at the at the wind maps and then yeah. compare it to the gas map and um, you know and and see that difference. And as and you can little... see, it, it just pipes up over that peninsula there, the Cabo Santa Elena Peninsula. And our the marina where you're going to tuck in is that first little horn that kind of tucks in. That's the Marina Papagayo. No, a little further down. Keep going down. Yeah, yeah. right in there. That's where our marina is, the way you'll check into Costa Rica as you leave Nicaragua. Uh, so okay. there is about 300 miles of adventure for you, <laughs> of weather adventure. So <laughs> our, our prediction usually is from northern Nicaragua, you just hug the coast right around Corinto. It starts moving almost on the beam, but you want to be half a mile of the beach or less. Because otherwise, you get real square waves hitting your hulls. San Juan del Sur, you'll go maybe another 10 miles south, and then you kind of like run with it, which is a, which is a crazy feeling because you're going with 20, 30 knots from almost one, almost from 180, but you're just going to run through the Cape. And right at the Cape, it's almost going to be dead calm. It's the oddest thing, right as you round that Cape. And then you basically tuck back in those little islands around that Cape. Those are called the Murcielagos. There's a couple of really nice anchorages. And then as you move your cursor to the, to the east, no, just straight to the east, there's a big bay in there, Portero Bay. Keep going a little further. Yeah, that bay right there, that's where Iran Contra, that's where Oliver North used to run his weapons into Nicaragua in the 80s from. So there's a little piece of history for you there. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Must be a fascinating, uh, you know, rally to do, being oh, able to do all these neat awesome. places. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, and then as you come around, uh, halfway down the peninsula, the rain, all of a sudden the wind will actually fizzle out and you will have consistently lovely winds just pushing you further down. But that is one of the trouble spots. And we always, we always say, be prepared for lots of gusts. And if you anchor, a lot of chain because your chain will rattle at night. Cool. All right. So then, then there is the, the central part of Costa Rica. And from there, this is the Golfo Dolce, right by Punta Arenas there. That's a lovely bay in there where you can rest up. As you can see, it's a lot of times in the sh very, very, very little wind in there. And then as you go further down, the next, the next bay, that's the uh, Golfo, Golfo Dolce one of the big water fjords, a complete jungle. There's a peninsula which has a beautiful national park and that's the end of Costa Rica. That's where you will check out and that's uh, Golfito. The area in between that and Punta Mala, which is the entrance to um, the Bay of Panama, this area has very little internet coverage. So that's where it will behoove you to have uh, uh, Predict Winds a satellite ship for in there because you will not have a lot of satellite coverage in that area, but it's beautiful. There's the Isla Secas. If you go a little bit further to the Southwest, or Southeast actually, yeah. that area, that big island there, that's Coiba, that's a national park. that has some amazing species, a very remote place. A lot of super yachts go diving there, which is a pretty beautiful spot there. Um, again, the weather in there tends to be in, in the period very fluky. You do get a lot of, um, in the months of uh, May, June, and July, you'll get a lot of lightning and thunderstorm activity there. And then, oh. and then so as you look over to that Cape map, you can yep some idea of, <laughs> yeah, these, the colors flashing up. Yeah. Got two the same. Um, and then that, that, that little cape there, that little nose that's coming out into Panama, uh, a little further, yeah. that's the cape, that's Punta Mala. And that is um, an interesting uh, phenomenon there because you have two things. You have the big, a big bay of Panama and it's the, because it is one of the easternmost bays of the entire Pacific, you will get a 20 foot tidal range in that bay. 
So you really want to time your, your way around the Cape at slack tide and make sure you don't have a lot of wind because the combination of a 20 foot tidal range and uh, not really fun winds give you some interesting weathers and, uh, um, around that Cape. And Punta Mala is notorious and it is named for that. So it, we have had people sitting in Playa Venal, which is the anchorage just in front of it, which is a lovely little surf town, up to a week before they were able to round that Cape. So take your time and look at those prediction models. The good news is in Playa Venal, you have a beautiful cell tower, so you can check your, your weather forecast uh, in the morning and at night to see if you want to sneak around that horn, that horn there. Yeah, uh, so. I mean, you'd want to definitely uh, look at the currents, the, t the wind and the wave all together, wouldn't you, to get that? Yeah, it's... it's right. It is. It can be quite nasty. The good news is you'll be you'll become a weather hawk just learning and watching for this because you have oh, you're under the influence there, and then you can sail up into the Bay of Panama and get to our Vista Mar Marina. Um, so that kind of like rounds out the Pacific side, the major obstacles, and how predict wind can help you make it through that area. Cool. Now let's go to. Um, I think you've set up one more model, and that's of course sailing from. Panama up to Jamaica? Yeah, uh, I've set two up actually. Okay, so that's that's the one. So if you're coming straight out of the canal and you want to head up to Jamaica, which avoids the entire pirate area of uh, the Nicaragua Honduran uh, bank, um, the the Gordo banks, um, this, would, this route will get you away from the pirates and will actually give you a straight shot up to Jamaica. Um, so, Nick, tell us a little bit about how you set up these models. Yeah, so what I've done here is we've actually got our, our weather routing running, which I was talking about earlier. So we can do a huge amount with the weather routing. Uh, we spend a lot of time with our weather routing tool, uh, making it better, and have just literally uh, released a, a big upgrade to it. Uh, the beauty of using a weather routing tool is that it knows where you're going to be um, and, you, and and makes best use of the models. I mean, you can see here that we've got a big split between the models. Um, and, you know, it's it's just the reason for that is they're obviously trying to uh, get around this, um, this light wind area here. So, uh, but if we, we, we could, we could compare all our models and, and, and they're probably pretty much the same. It's just that they want to want to get us around that. Um, as I said before, if we if we click somewhere on one of these routes, it's just going to change models for me. Uh, you, I've got all the information uh, at each point in time that uh, that I want to be able to see. So I've got the I've got the wind, I've got the wind direction, I've got the gusts, um, and I've got current, I've got waves, uh, you know, wave direction and period. Uh, I've got pressure temperature, rain, and cape. So for, for each spot that I am along that route, um, anywhere along this route, I can, uh, I can, see, I can see what's, what's happening with the weather, um, which is a pretty, a pretty powerful uh, thing to be able to see. Um, but what, and so it's not, it's not just a guess. Um, you, can, you can set up your, your boat type, and um, and and have that all all working for you. Um, and if I go back over here, and we can actually see a, a huge amount of information um, about the you know the wind along our route, um, what speed we're going, and um, our course, and all the different models, and compare them. Um, also, how long we're going to take. Another important thing that we could probably look at here is um, the departure planning. So, you know, we talked before about, you know, when might we want to leave to go somewhere. It's, we've actually got a tool that will help you with that. Um, and I just want to stress that it's a tool um, and it's not, oh, it's said to go then. You need to think about why, why does it want me to go then? What am I, what am I looking at? Um, but uh, yeah, I can, I could, I can set um, how far apart I want my intervals and it could, you know, I could have them at four hours or 12 hours. I can change that up here um, and you know change them to 12 hours apart and it will 
run a route for if I left at each of those times. Um, and so it's amazing how different how different uh, your start time can make uh, to your route and the comfort of your route. You know, like it, 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 leaving it 12 hours later could could be everything to, to having a, a, a bad trip to a good trip. Um, so, but before we do that, let's just quickly, um, we won't, we won't do that. I want to run uh, a, a route and uh, have a look at the ocean data. And we'll just move that over here while that's calculating. So just so, um, so you know that, oh, actually here's this little piece of, uh, you talked about the current here before. Yeah. And um, so we've got more than one current model and um, we can uh, have a look at, 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 you know, we can see these currents here. I mean, this, is, this isn't taking into account the actual local tides, but I mean, the fact that that picks that up in a global current model uh, that's you know going to definitely give you an indication of the direction, and um, and and you know help help you put that um, you know use all those tools together to give you a complete picture. Um, and the same up here, you know there is there is currents, um, and we can see again where we hit the currents uh, with, with at, at whatever time, um, and the router will try and use them uh, to your advantage. You just want to make sure that the router isn't putting you into, let's see, these currents heading north here, but you wouldn't want to be <laughs> well, heading north there into a, a wind coming from the north. So, you know, obviously wind against the current is a bad situation. Uh, yeah. But wherever you go, um, you know, the, these, these models are there. And if you're going to head up to the US, you know, obviously it starts to pick up um, all the currents up there as well. But uh, Great. Yeah, we probably should have looked at the, down the coast there because yeah, there's there's definitely uh, yeah definitely worth looking at the current models and um, you know we do have more than one model as well and you can choose which model you want to look at. So this the weather routing that we're looking at here, you can actually do all of this. We're, we're I'm on the PredictWind website at the moment, but this is what the stuff that you can do in the PredictWind offshore app, and you can have this current data. Um, will save into the offshore app, and so you can use that when you're at sea. Great. So, yeah, definitely worth looking at. Hey, great. So, how does this? Um, how do I set my comfort zone then? Let's say I wanted to be, I want to take that route up to Jamaica. How does it tell me when to depart? How, do, how would it? How would the forecasting work? So, d d as in, do you want to know when when you would? how you would uh, use it to leave or if you wanted to avoid bad weather so there's two two different things there so, I, mean, I want both right i want to i want to know when to leave in order to avoid the worst yeah weather. so okay so let's just go over to the departure planner right and let's click on that and i assume and, uh, it looks at the forecast over the next 10 days and it's a well so it's just giving us planner. it's just giving us a time it's gonna it, so i've got that i set that up before and yep. so it's from now. So let's say I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm waiting to leave and um, I'm, all, I'm all checked out. And it's going to give me now in 12 hours and 24 hours and in 36 hours. Or I could change that time step out um, and I could uh, look at, um, you know, further steps apart or I could I could move the start time. I could I could change that start time yep. to be in a day's time, but it's only going to give me four options. OK. Um, okay. But if I the, 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 the way to use this is to actually look at the is to not really look at the map as such. Once you've decided when you might want to go, then you go back to the weather routing and run yeah. the weather routing starting at that time. And, and so, so you, and here you can see basically, oh, here's the maximum wind speed which I will encounter. Here's the minimums, and that will that will basically give you better departure odds, so to speak. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just it just lets you know that if I if I leave at this time, so I've got the, you know, I've got now, I've got tonight and, and tomorrow and the next day. And it tells you for each of those days, you know, the time that I'm going to be sailing upwind, um, the, the, the average, uh, the, the wind speeds, uh, the maximum, minimum. Um, if I had my motoring settings on, how much motoring I'd be doing. 
Yeah. Um, so, but we want to, you know, even if we look at these, we can see that, uh, the, the, you know, there's, there's more time spent sailing upwind than in others. I mean, yep. the GFS is giving a, a pretty different scenario to the ECMWF. So we could, we could flick over and we could uh, look at the PWG and the PWE. And actually, uh, by the time, um, you know, by next week, we're actually going to have the, the UKMO and the SPY model in there as well. So we get a bit more consensus yeah um, and, and see get a bit of agreement but yeah so we can look at what we're going to get and um and also we've got wave in here as well so we can see you know the, yep. the percentage of time that you'll spend in, in a particular wave height so yep. um sometimes you can see huge differences in which time you leave uh this isn't there's not i don't there's not huge differences in here but there's definitely a difference between the weather models so and certainly the upwind right yeah 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 i mean ideally we would choose a uh we would want we'd choose one where we're reaching and downwind yeah know? yeah nice. so the departure four looks really good <laughs> yeah at least better yeah, that one there in the gfs but then we'd want to look at all the models and and see but we could run a we could say oh well let, we're going to leave it i don't know whether we would leave it midnight but anyway um on the on the you know on this date yep and we could go to the weather routing and we can compare all the models at once so we might go okay this looks like the best time to to go and then we might run the weather routing we might go actually let's 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 run the departure planning again and move them further apart yep perfect hey i appreciate that that is a real cool tool uh, that's very much appreciated especially as as you're doing some longer passages here and you can't really tuck in yeah, exactly. You, you know, when you're sailing, um, you know, <laughs> between islands uh, or land masses, it's, um, yeah. Great. Um, cool. Thanks for that. I think you have one more spot, one more route from Santa Marta, but it's basically the same. I think it was another another route where you leave from Colombia and you go up to Jamaica. That's Yeah, the, we did. We did. And you can see this one here is um, fairly you know, consistent. Well, yeah so this is actually you might go some people might go oh well what's the point in that you know it's just it just says go straight there and do you know what this is a really really good thing uh we've got all the models are saying the same thing because there's not some big variance in the models you know when we looked at the one before it wanted to get us around that that light wind patch yeah and so it showed a, a, a deviation in the models um this one here they all obviously agree. And we can also, without even looking at it too hard, because uh, I'd look at this stuff all the time, you can see that because the, as we move, the, the, the boat is the, the model we're looking at. We've got the ECMWF turned on. Yep. But the other ones there, the, the, the green is the GFS model, the blue is the PWG, and the red is the PWE. Fairly and they're predictable. All, yeah. they're, they're, all, they're all doing the same thing. The boat's, the boat's going the same speed in all the models, which means that, the wind must be pretty pretty similar in all the models so yeah. um yeah it's a it's a it's 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 pretty good and um great yeah and as well, that's... Before, we can look at everything inside the inside the routing as well uh, just to, just one more thing on that is that when you are crossing it is really important especially if there has been um a bit of uncertainty you know a bit of uncertainty in the forecast that you update you know, it's really important as you go, you move this point to where you are, you set your lat long up over here. And um, you'll see as I move that point that my lat long changes up here. You can you can put that in from your GPS or if you had an Iridium Go, uh, that would um, show a little white dot where you were and you can just move your start to it and run a new weather out. So the uh, probably for everything that we've talked about today, uh, the most recent forecast is always going to be the most accurate one because it's had all the new observational data fed into it. So updating your forecast is super, super important. Relying on a three day old forecast is a recipe for bad things to happen. So yeah, definitely copy that. look at how you can update your forecasts. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. All right. And let's move on now. Um, so we have a pretty good understanding on how these models work. We have the ways of getting them offshore and onshore, near shore by using either the web or using the app. And the app runs on Android and on Mac 
on iOS. Is that correct? So the offshore app, oh, so actually, well, actually all of our software, so whether yep. you're using the predict one, which is the one we use when we're in, um, on land or we're in Wi-Fi yep. um, range, and then the offshore app, it's, yes, it's called an app, but uh, the reason it's called an app is that it's a standalone piece of software. So yeah, the, they all of them run on iOS, so your iPhone, your iPad, all of them run on Mac, so your Mac laptop, um, or desktop, if you so happen to have a boat <laughs> that's got a desktop on it, uh, and a PC. So whether um, uh, you know whether it's your PC, laptop, or, or desktop, and um, and also Android, and uh, actually even Chromebook. So yeah, we cover all the bases there on on the offshore app and on the Predict Wind app. So yeah, they can they can all talk to uh, with the offshore app that that piece of software gives you the ability to talk to uh, uh, your satellite um, connection, depending on what it is. And great. And now we get to the good part because PredictWind is supporting us and we're supporting them. So what do you got for us, Nick? Come on, come on. Uh, <laughs> and so I believe that we have a 20% discount for everybody that's in the, in, in the Panama posse. Is that, that's I heard, did I hear 20? 20 is great. Yes, I think 20 is awesome. Thank you. Hugs and kisses all around. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, and you know, having these um, having these tools and these and the different weather models. Uh, I mean, it's the you know, yes, we, we we do have a free service. So don't you know, don't go. Oh, I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to spend any money. There is we do have a a, a great freemium service. Uh, but if you want to use these weather routing tools and get the, the high resolution um, gribs that, that is in our paid subscription. Yeah. But you know, as I say, you get the 20% discount. And I mean, compared to everything else that you spend on your boat, uh, having the best weather you can get is definitely worth paying for. Uh, it's worth your life. Uh, it's worth everybody on your boat wanting to continue sailing with you. You know, you don't wanna, you have uh, some bad experiences where you get the weather wrong. Uh, you know, the wife and kids or your friends may not want to come sailing with you anymore. And uh, that's a that's a pretty expensive one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you so much uh, for for this. And thanks for putting it into context specifically with some of the areas that we're concerned. We may follow up with you at a future session to go more over Caribbean routes. But this is awesome. Uh, thanks again. And let's continue uh, with the rest of the day. Uh, thanks. Bye, Nick. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much.